Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the Linares Tournament of 2005. Uh, the last uh, tournament uh, where Kasparov played as an active chess player and it's a, it, it's a game that shows how uh, every position, even, um, uh, even a very equal one, is merely an opportunity for you to... Uh, get, get your opponent to blunder. The problem is you have to continue making uh, precise moves in equal positions and then uh, if your opponent is unable to do that you will uh, be able to, um, uh, to win the game. So let's check it out. Uh, Kasparov has the white pieces. This is round four. Uh, we've seen uh, how he how he defeated Paco Vejo in round three. Uh, so let's uh, check it out. Kasparov opens with pawn to d4. We have knight to f6 by uh, Adams, uh, c4, e6, and now knight to c3, inviting the Nimzo Indian, and that's exactly for, uh, what Adams goes for. So we have bishop to b4, the Nimzo Indian defense, uh, and queen to c2. We've already shown the game Kasparov played uh, against Adams with the black pieces. It was a very nice victory two videos ago. If you haven't seen it, do check it out uh, quite an amazing game. Uh, and okay, uh, pawn to d5, this is the Noah variation, uh, and now pawn to a3. Bishop captures, queen captures, so no messing up the pawn structure on the queen side, and now knight to e4. You get to um, uh, bring your knight to this beautiful e4 square very early on, we have queen back to c2, and now there are some moves you could consider like b6, c5, castles, many uh, good ideas here, knight to d7, Adams goes for pawn to e5, um, uh, tries to settle all, all the tension in the center very early on, C captures on D4, Queen captures, the Queen is very nicely placed here as the Knight is no longer uh, able to come to C3 as it's not there, and Pawn to F3, challenging uh, this Knight, and here Knight back to D6. Uh, interestingly, Kasparov uh, had this position with the black pieces against Vladimir Kramnik and he uh, won his game against uh, Kramnik. Uh, in 1998 where he played knight to f6 but uh, in, in 2005 knight to d6 was considered the strongest reply so this is what Adams goes for we have d captures on e5 queen captures and now pawn to e4 grabbing the full center knight to c6 and now knight to e2 we have bishop to e6 bishop to f4 now attacking uh, Adams's queen and queen to a5 check and now there is one game where queen to c3 was played but here Kasparov plays knight to c3 and it is now as of move 14 that we have a completely new game. And okay, uh, knight to c3, we have castles queen side by Adams and castles queen side by, uh, by Gary. Uh, a very, very uh, interesting position, both players just castling queen side. Pawn to f5, striking against uh, Kasparov's strong center. Bishop captures on d6, Kasparov gives up his uh, bishop for this d6 knight, but in order to mess up Adams' pawn structure and open up his king a little bit. Rook captures on d6, we have rook captures on d6, c captures, and now bishop to b5, this is how Kasparov develops the bishop, and now the rook can also get into the game via the d1 square, maybe the e1 square, uh, if the um, uh, position Position opens up here or maybe even king will go to b1 and then the rook can come to c1 so knight to d4 uh, and this is a very uh, tricky move Kasparov played bishop to b5 of course knowing that Adams can just play knight to d4 attacking his queen and bishop on b5 uh, but it's maybe not the most precise way uh, to go about things because it really um, uh, forces what happens next and I believe this is what Kasparov was hoping for knight to d4 attacks the queen and the bishop and now queen to d3 defends the bishop on b5 uh, Adams captures knight captures knight captures now going after the d6 pawn and there's no good way to defend the pawn as the knight will be able to, to grab it with check so just f captures on e4 and this is the most precise way to play this queen captures on d6 and now comes queen captures on b5 uh, trading bishop for knight here the problem is you cannot uh, defend this if you play b queen to b6 or something like that even knight captures on a7 with check is possible and after queen captures you will play queen captures on e6 with check and even grab d4 pawn and you're just going to be down two pawns of course this will be completely winning for for Kasparov so instead after queen captures on d6 we have a trade here queen captures on b5 queen captures on e6 with check king to b8 and now queen captures on e4 and now it's a little bit better as you are only down one pawn but still well, down one pawn queen and rooks um, uh, still in the game 
should be able to, to hold this to a draw. So rook to e8, you could also go rook to c8 with check, but it's not really anything special. So rook to e8 attacks the white queen, queen to f for check, king to a8, and now king to b1, getting the king off of that c file, so you don't have to worry about any nasty checks. And now Adams goes pawn to g5. He does have a uh, two to three disadvantage on the king side, and he wants to get um, his pawns to, to favorable squares. So queen to f7 puts pressure on the h7 pawn, h6 now. And Kasparov, of course, uh, wants to break this up uh, by playing pawn to h4. We have a6, creating some uh, breathing room uh, for the black king, and now h captures, h captures, and queen to f6. Uh, putting uh, putting pressure on the g5 pawn for the moment it's defended by the queen uh, but uh, you have to be uh, careful where you put the queen and the problem is if you play something like rook to e2 to put constant pressure on that b2 pawn you just very easily lose just rook to h8 with check and there's not much you can do like king to a7 queen to d4 check now you uh, either play b7 and then uh, you run into all sorts of uh, checkmating ideas or you play queen to b6 and now just a nice rook to a8 check uh, ends the game you have to capture and you blunder your queen on b6 so instead queen to d3 check by adams king to a1 and now just queen to d2 putting um, a little pressure on that g2 pawn also defending the g5 pawn and uh, of course notice that if you capture the g5 pawn will be defended so it's not easy for kasparov to make progress here he tries uh, queen to f7 just making some precise moves uh, maybe Adams puts his rook on a weird square rook to e5 and okay queen to c7 again puts pressure on the rook rook back to e8 we have queen to f7 again puts pressure on the rook uh, and rook to e5 Adams obviously very happy with the draw here he is down a pawn uh, queen to f6 again puts pressure on the rook rook back to e8 and here Kasparov plays g4 he says all right let's get rid of that weakness on g2 but now you have a weakness on f3 so king to a7, the king will be a little bit safer there. You don't have to worry about any uh, immediate um, uh, checks along the back rank if the if the rook ever moves from the back rank. And the queen to f5 by Kasparov. Uh, we have king to a8. Uh, Adams just repeats the position, says he's very happy with the draw here. King to b1. We have rook to d8 and now rook to c1. Notice that uh, Adams can always trade queens if he wants to, uh, but he prefers his chances with the queens on the board. So rook to d5 chases away the queen and Kasparov goes queen e4. We have king to a7 again, now rook to c3. Maybe even with some ideas of shifting the rook to b3 and putting pressure on that b7 pawn, although you have to be very, very careful. Uh, when doing this we have queen d1 check king to a2 now queen back to d2 Adams not very impressed with uh, Kasparov's attempts we have rook to c2 goes after the queen queen to d3 and now Kasparov says all right you we can trade but of course I'm not gonna trade here and then just allow your rook to put pressure on my f3 pawn he plays rook to e2 he says all right if you want to trade you can trade but if you trade then I capture with the f pawn and then I start pushing my past e pawn and with the the black king's so far away from the action it will be uh it will be fairly easy to push this pawn so instead we have rook to d4 uh adam's trying to get kasparov to trade on d3 and kasparov just moves the queen to e3 says nope not happening uh, and adam's plays pawn to a5 if he can get his pawn to a4 that will uh severely limit the the movements of the black king plus you will always have queen to b3 check and basically you will always have a, a draw so rook to e1, uh, king to a6, and now uh, Adams by playing king to a6 is offering the g5 pawn for the f3 pawn. And it's not a bad deal for Kasparov. Uh, for one, he does get a pass pawn on the king side. So queen captures on g5, we have queen captures on f3, and now queen to g6 with check. And the, like I've mentioned in the beginning of the video, uh, every equal position is merely an opportunity for your opponent to make a mistake. And that is what, of course, Kasparov is hoping for. He played queen to b6 and Adams has to play pawn to b6. It's not a move you want to make because you open up um, uh, your king to all sorts of attacks because uh, as long as the pawn is on b7, the seventh rank is sort of protected from checks. Once you push it here, it does appear your king will be a bit more vulnerable. Uh, but let's say uh, the game would continue queen to g8 and now 
uh, what uh, what do you play? Of course, you, you're not going to allow uh, white to start checking. You can trade queens here. Let's say captures, captures, uh, rook to g1, prepares to push the passed pawn, rook g5 stops the pawn, and this will be enough, of course, for black to achieve a draw. However, after queen to g6 check, Adams played king to a7, which appears to be even more safe, uh, but the problem is the position is completely winning for Kasparov now, but it's not easy to, to spot why. So feel free to pause the video, and this is only the first pause the video moments in this video uh, while I give you a couple of seconds and try to find the only idea that wins the game for Kasparov uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that weakness on a5. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to e5. That's the that's the move that wins the game. The problem is, uh, you can see that the g4 pawn is hanging. If you just advance the pawn to g5, this is insufficient. Just queen to d5 with check and after king to b1, rook g4. And now you will not be able to, to save this pawn and the a5 pawn is nicely defended. Uh, sort of what Adams was hoping for. However, Kasparov plays the precise rook to e5 and there is just no defense now. The, the e, a5 pawn is attacked. Uh, he does go for rook to a4. The problem is if you go queen g4, uh, then you just uh, run into trouble. Rook captures on a5 check, king to b8, and now it's a, it's a forced checkmating sequence. Queen to a check, rook king to c7, rook to c5 with check, king to b6, queen to b5 check, king a7, and now queen to a5 check seals the deal. King b8, queen to c7 check, king a7, and now of course rook to a5 will be checkmate. So instead after rook e5, rook to a4 was played by Adams. This is the the only move that prolongs the game as the pawn is defended on a5 uh, but now comes um, uh, the very nasty queen to h5 putting more pressure on that a5 pawn and moving the queen away from the g file so now Kasparov can even start advancing his past the g pawn and uh, it's not easy for the for the black queen to deliver any checks because d5 is guarded and f7 is guarded by the white queen. So here b6 is played uh, and uh, now again a very very tricky position only one move to, uh, to forcefully win the game for Kasparov not an easy one to spot uh, feel free to pause the video and win the game for, for Gary uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able uh, to do it, congratulations on not resorting to any uh, any silly checks. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to e8. That's how you do it. You uh, shift the queen to a more active position where now you are ready to deliver some deadly checks, but you do it with tempo as the rook on a4 is hanging. So congratulations to everyone who spotted that. And now the problem is you can pick up the pawn, but if you do this, then the rook is so far away from the action, uh, uh, the, the black king will not survive this. Rook e7 check king a6 queen to c8 with check now uh, there's really not much to do you have to go to b5 now rook to e5 with check king to a4 and now queen to c2 check the black king is out of squares you have to block and this will now be checkmate so of course after queen to e8 adam tried rook to c4 in order to be able to bring the rook uh, back to the seventh rank or eighth rank uh, depends on how kasparov continues checking but now pawn to g5 so all of this was uh, in order to uh, save the pawn on, uh, on g4 and start advancing and now it's a pass pawn and if you cannot start uh, checking the white king, that means that pawn is unstoppable. So rook to c7, uh, getting the rook to help out with the defense of the king. Also, you cover the g7 square. But now queen to e6 by Kasparov. Uh, we have pawn to a4 uh, going for... Uh, that a queen to b3 check for the moment it's impossible but that's why Kasparov put the queen on e6. Uh, rook to e4 now goes after the a4 pawn and queen to d1. Uh, this is how Adam defends the pawn but now Kasparov just plays rook to d uh, rook to b4 the the most precise move possible and it was in this position on move 54 that Michael Adams resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, the, the b6 pawn is hanging and there's no way to, to do anything here. If you try something like rook to b7, yes, you defend the pawn, but now just queen to c4 and the 
uh, the, the a4 pawn uh, will uh, will fall or, or we play b5 then the b5 pawn will fall uh, black has no compensation here and if you don't play that what what else is there you could play something like queen to g1 okay you could defend the pawn this way uh, but now just rook captures on a4 and you get checkmated very quickly queen b7 queen to e4 uh, or d5 with check doesn't really matter and after okay you go here it's a nice checkmate but if you go to c8 then queen to e8 with check king to b7 and now again queen to a8 will be checkmate so very nicely done by Kasparov winning his second game in a row so winning round uh, rounds uh, three and four and uh, you've seen how uh, uh, it, it, it's an equal position but it's always uh, it's always a pawn up so you, ha you have to be very careful and here by uh, by, by giving this check he uh, give Adams an opportunity to make a mistake in, in a sort of a, a position that, that it's possible to hold, but you have to play the nasty looking b6. So also something that you can take from the game and maybe try to employ in your own games. Uh, don't look, don't always go for the um, more aesthetically pleasing move. It, it kind of seems like you, you keep a better position, uh, but the b6 was, was the move that would probably save Adams the game. He would still have to fight for it, but he would, he would definitely have chances. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Maybe you can take something from this and, uh, like I said, employ it in your, in your own games. Or, uh, if not, just uh, enjoy a nice victory by Kasparov in his last tournament as an active player. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Jules. Uh, and I would like to thank Bocho, Kenneth Frazier, the Bacchus, and CDs for trade for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.